Thou shalt not kill. Would that help us if we obeyed that law? Thou shalt not steal. Yeah. That would help our community, wouldn't it? Yeah. If we married the sisters instead of leaving a bunch of kids, oh, Lord. would that help the community? Instead of uh -huh. kids growing up without uh -huh. their fathers coming out to the streets, being effeminate, turning into gangbangers? Yeah. Teach! No that, daddy, no mama. These laws would help our community. Yeah. Bring it out! So that's what we out here. We're out here to bring our people back to, the, to these laws and statutes and commandments. That's right! We were the people that these laws, statutes, and commandments were given to. So that's why God's punishing us for not keeping these laws. That's why we in the conditions that we are in today. Let's go, baby. Bring it out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Moses was telling the Israelites in the wilderness, he said, listen, this gonna happen. When you stop, if you don't listen to the Lord, Lord thy God, we listen to God by reading this book and applying what's written in. Read on. To observe, to do all his commandments. No, just the Ten Commandments. All his commandments. It's a, this is a book full of commandments. We're supposed to be doing all that's written therein. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses came upon us and overtaken us, and it continues to overtake us. Generation after generation, it, it gets worse. Because not applying these laws, statutes, and commandments. Some people think that, oh, well, I don't want to be no robot. I want to do what I want to do. I got free will. Ain't no free will. These laws, statutes, and commandments are what's going to help us build our community, rebuild our community. It's going to help us come out of the, the dung hill that we in. We on the bottom of the barrel. So repentance is going to help us. Repenting and turning our lives around, coming back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. Which what uh, the, the other teacher was going into, our oppressor does not want us to do that. That's why he keep, he keep uh, sin all around us. He keep drugs on our corner. We I ain't got no, ain't none of us got no connections with uh, with uh, Colombians and all that, and can't can't bring nothing across across the border. You see how tight they got the border sealed? How does stuff keep getting in there? Teach white man. We don't we don't make the guns. How we got a, a, a gun problem in our community? Right. White man. So we we, we got to put two and two together, but we're not doing that because we're in a deep sleep. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 36. He has found out all the ways of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, his beloved. Read it one more time. He has found out all the ways of knowledge and has given it unto Jacob, his servant, and, and to Israel, his beloved. So come on back over here, sister. The dog gone. He done took that dog off. So that Bible you got at home, he said he found out all the ways of knowledge. So we gotta, we gotta open, we gotta crack that thing open and we gotta apply what's written. That's what's gonna change our spirit. John 6 and 63. That's what's gonna actually change us. And when we start changing ourselves and repenting, we're gonna see a difference out here in the streets. But I hate to see my people like this, but I can't go around helping everybody. But see, you can see that, and a lot of our people, Maybe they gave me a little that Yeah, our people are in the delusion of inclusion. Uh -huh. We think we're free. They, they don't value their life. True. They don't care if they fall dead right here. They all look alike now. You know, Satan, Satan yeah. gotta look like those is people. Right, so we gotta, we gotta, this is what's gonna bring us out of this, this deep sleep that we in. Because I see people look like they're sleepwalking. The light was still green, the cars is going, they just walked off into the middle of the street. Like what kind of drugs are we on out here? They show not Jesus. Listen to this. This is the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63. Bring it out. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Now when they say the flesh profiteth nothing, that, that, that goes into the things of the world that our people like. Cars with rims on them, out here getting money, uh, chasing these girls. Yeah. That's, those are fleshly desires. Yeah, that's bad That's going to end up, the, the wages of sin is death. That's all they're going to get from that. They ain't going to profit them at all. Listen up. 
the words that I speak, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words from this Bible, once you apply them, God is going to put his spirit on you. So you're going to become a new creature. And it's going to, uh, you're going to change. Your spirit is going to change. I can give you a law that you're going to apply that will make you change right now. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. You can apply this today. So when we apply these laws to our life, something happens to us. Something spiritual happens. We change. That's why all, you got all these churches on every corner. People going in and coming out of the churches, but they're not learning God's law. Nothing has changed. So let me, let me, let me, let me, let me bring you. Okay, listen, this is going to change you in a little more. Listen up. Because you believe in this Bible, right? You believe in God, right? And whatever God say, you you going to do. Because that's, that's the stance I take. Whatever God say, I'm going to do. All right, so listen up. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. A woman shall not wear what pertains to a man. What pertains to a man? This is talking about clothes. Boxers. Boxers. What else? Tank top. A tank top. Anything pertains. Gym shoes. Pants. Pants, sis. Pants pertain to a man. Neither shall a man put on what? And neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a woman shouldn't wear pants, a man shouldn't wear a dress. That make that's right. Because that's cross dressing. That's right. If I was up in here in a dress preaching to you, you'd probably look at me like I was crazy. Teach. The Lord said that's an abominable thing to cross dress. You heard that, sis? So you said whatever uh, the Lord said you do, so what you gonna do, sis? Huh? You gonna wear me and stuff. You got on man stuff right now. You got on a pair of pants. Oh, I'm not. Look at that zipper up in there. What you gonna pull out of there and do something wait, with? Wait a minute, wait. White man, put it on white man. No, don't blame the white man. But yeah, the well, they did start that trend because uh, okay, I we go never, our back. sisters. I go further back. Put it on Adam and Eve. Okay, they were shamed when they opened up their eyes. They were naked. So what did they do? Ran from the Lord and put leaves in front of them. And that's the clothes style happened. Sus. So, Women never wore pants. That was never a trend until 68, 70. Right. So all those years on the earth from creation on up until that time, women were wearing dresses and skirts. That's right. Even well the now, the world is so corrupted, we got to stay ready if we don't get to go, brother. We got to wear pants just in case somebody want to jump on me. Now you just said that you uh, was going to do uh, whatever the Lord uh, said well, in this book. God knows my heart. Now you create. You know, now we're creating excuses. So listen to this. Verse 13. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from and from the prophets, even unto the priests, everyone dealeth falsely. So you're not learning. You're not learning what the, the prophets and the priests are not showing you what they are supposed to show you in these churches. That's why none, nothing in the community has changed. And there's a, it's a church almost on every corner. So what, what's the priest supposed to be teaching our people? The, Bible, the word of God. What are you supposed to be teaching our people? The word of God. The word of God, which is what? Knowledge. Knowledge? And what? O and obedience. Obedience? Obedience to what? To his word. To his word, you, you close, you hot to us. You hot, you on fire. This is what the priest should be teaching our people. The priest should be teaching us knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law. The what? The law. Deuteronomy 22 and 5 was a law. The Bible, God's word said that's what they should seek from the, from the priest. Read on. At his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. If he is a true messenger of God, uh -huh. he's going to teach you the law so you can, so we can fix our community. That's right. That's right. Where they at? Where, where they at? We, we, the Israelites are the only ones coming out here trying to fix the community. That's 
Spectrum. The Israelites are the only ones coming out here teaching our people God's laws, teaching our people their true nationality in these last days. Bring it out! Teaching us, teaching our people that they must repent if we want anything to change. Okay, let's say if you don't like, you don't, you don't, you don't want it to change. You, you like it the way it is. Well, Time is running out. Because when Christ come back, it's going to be hell to tell the captain. Alright? Acts 3 and 30, uh, 19. So we all must repent. Destruction is coming to this earth. Oh, yeah. So that's why we're coming out here. We're coming out here to, to save our people. We love our people. But, but your people don't love themselves. Yeah, well, well, we gotta we gotta try to put that self-love. Got that? Yes, sir. Listen up to this, sis. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So what does it mean to be converted? What does it mean? Convert. It means to change. So what changes us? Uh, the, the word of God. The, the word of God. What's the, give me uh, Isaiah 8 20. So that's what's going to change us. You're absolutely right. The word of God, once we apply it, is going to change us. It's going to change our whole community. This is the book. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. To the law and the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. So now that's why that, that's how we know what the word is. What did it say? The law, God's laws that we were given, and the testimonies of the other prophets. And guess what? Guess, guess what the prophets testify? They all testify. Uh, this place called Babylon the Great being destroyed by fire. That's why the prophets are coming out here to wake their people up. Because this is our way out. We ain't got no bomb shelter that we could go hide in when nukes start hitting. You see what I'm saying? This is our way out. This is our salvation right here. So now we're going to go into what changes us, what converts us. God's, God's laws change us. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise the simple. So God's laws make a simple person wise. God's laws converts a person's soul. Okay, so a, 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 a lot of people walking around in the midst of sin. When you start applying God's laws, that's going to convert your soul. Because he's going to put his spirit on it. All right? So we preaching repentance to our people. Blacks, right. Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. You must repent and come back to God's laws. Because destruction is coming to this earth. Right. You won't be enjoying your sin for much longer. So we talk, talking about repentance. You must repent. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Bring it up. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Well, look at that. You, if you change, you start applying God's laws, your sins, all the wickedness that you've been doing for over the, over the years, God says he'll blot that out. I don't know about y'all, but I'm willing to get, get I, I, I want my slate wiped clean. I want my slate wiped clean. So you gotta start, you gotta repent and come back to God's laws. That's right. Or else you're gonna catch a piece of that fire when that destruction comes. Yeah, right. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So the, pres the presence of the Lord is gonna bring refreshing for this earth. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 5. Yeah. The earth also is the fowl. Under the and ho ho ho. The earth is what? Also is defiled. So you know what it means to be defiled? Being uh, well, it's, it's unclean. The earth is uh, unclean right now. Yeah. yeah, I can see. Well, no, not just by that. Not uh, just by the trash that's, that's around here. Brain. But the sin that's being pushed in this, in this earth. The wickedness that's being pushed in this earth. That's right. Homosexuality being pushed in this earth. When God's laws is against that. Yeah. Uh, just promiscu promiscu uh, being promiscuous and not and just having random sex instead of marrying your, your women. All that stuff is being pushed. Unclean foods are being pushed in this earth. Right. 
Everything. 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 This society goes against God's law. Everything that God has written in this book. Bring it out. So the earth is defiled. So that's what needs refreshing. Read. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broke the everlasting covenant. So who changed the ordinances? Who's ruling right now? We ain't ruling, so we following the laws that are being pushed on us. Who's ruling right now? Huh? Are we are, are the blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans ruling? Oh yeah. We are? No. no. What nation the people are ruling? The white people. Huh? The white people. The so-called white man. Yeah, that's it's true. They're the ones ruling. They're the ones pushing these laws that we have to follow. Right. So the earth is defiled. The earth also is defiled under inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broke the everlasting covenant. So wait a minute, they have transgressed the laws. Two men getting married, is that one of God's laws? No. No, no, no it's not. That's safe. So uh, in this book, it get, he gives us what we're supposed to eat, what's, what's clean and what's unclean. But guess what? The unclean foods are, are, are selling harder than the clean foods. Shrimp, crab, lobster, we, those are delicacies now. Read on. Verse 6. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. You hear that? The, the prophet Isaiah is prophesying about this place being burned because it is defiled. That's why it is imperative. It is very important that our people wake up and return to the Most High God because we weren't always at the bottom of the barrel. We were once a wise and mighty nation. And to get back there, we must repent. Our men must stand up and take leadership and ownership and responsibility in our community. You, you, you see our older men around here drinking at 9 o'clock. You, you drinking a beer before you eat an egg. Uh, well, you're AA. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, no. We destroy it. You drink from, from the morning to the end of the, of the night. You're supposed to be leading your people. Our, our young men are selling death. Uh, they, they, they selling drugs to the old, older people. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 26. I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. So God said he's going to restore us back to that, that mighty, that wise and mighty nation. He's going to restore our judges, which is the men of our, our, our people. That's right. The, the true judges of this earth, our, our, our faces are not known. Because who's running the earth now? The wicked is, he's the wicked according to this Bible. We're going to show you that as well. We're supposed to be standing up, enforcing God's laws, enforcing righteousness in our communities. We're not supposed to let our sisters walk around showing their breastlessness and their butt cheeks. Because that promotes what? Whoredom in your community. You ain't gonna get married like that. You just gonna get tossed up. You just gonna get slammed and, and, and he's gonna move on. So we got to push righteousness. We gotta tell our young men to put them guns down. If you have a problem with your brother, go and talk to your brother. Right. Stop smoking weed, stop getting high, stay sober minded. That's what the men of our nation should be telling, uh, pushing righteousness towards our people. Read. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness. So we're going to be called the city of righteousness because we're going to push righteousness in our community. That's not happening right now. You got, you got Negroes waking up, blacks and Hispanics. That, when I say Negroes, I mean blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans. That's right. You getting up early in the morning drinking beer. You using drugs and, and selling drugs to your own people. We even listen to uh, uh, the music we listen to. Who listen, what nation of people listens to music that talks about destroying their own people? Bring it out. out their own women. Yeah. Bring it out. We have to repent. There's something seriously wrong with us. That was 26. 27. Verse 27. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. We're going to be redeemed. But we're going to be redeemed with 
judgment. So those of us who don't want to repent, guess what? They're going to catch judgment. They're going to be a part of this destruction that's coming to this place. Zion shall we be redeemed with judgment and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressor and of the sinner shall be together. So the sinners and all that go against God and his word, they're going to be destroyed together. Every, every prophet has prophesied destruction to the wicked throughout this Bible. Teacher. Anybody who's breaking God's law. So now let's get back on those fans. Sis. What you going to do? You going to go get your dress? Or you going you gonna to stay in there? Uh, you know this a wicked world. I got to run for my life. It's slow. Huh? Well, uh, I got to keep these pads. Well, listen. You go. You can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. Because look, this is an adjustment for I, I, the clothes we wear. Listen up, sis. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Listen up. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice. So he ain't coming back to put, put pass out Kool-Aid and cotton candy to nobody. He's coming back to judge. He's coming back to judge. And he's going to judge according to what? Because y'all wear any pants. He's he going to judge according to his laws that's written. To who's doing what he's saying and who ain't doing what he's saying. And it, sh it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. All, all such that are what? Are clothed with strange apparel. So a man wearing a dress that's strange apparel. A woman in pants, which was not a custom until 68, 70. That was not a custom until now. So that's strange apparel to the Lord. So since we out here trying to save your life, we're trying to get you to repent. Don't don't make this thing hard in your mind. All, all it's very simple. Whatever his whatever his law says, we just apply. That's all. It's not hard at all. Don't wrestle with it in your mind. In Sirach 32, verse 24. Bring it out. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. So don't wrestle with the thoughts in your mind. Just trust in the Lord. Take heed to the commandments. If it say put on a dress, it's just start putting on dresses. All our wives wear dresses. That's right. right. All well, year round. Oh, yeah. well, and I, exercise well, in them. I, I just went to God and send me a hood, and then I wear a dress. All our wives wear that's dresses. Good. And it's good that you desire uh, you desire a husband. That's a good thing. But do not wait, to keep, for do not wait to keep the commandments. Because we did not, we, we don't know from one, one day to the next what's going to happen. Hey, read that again. Read that again. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord. So it says, he that believeth in the Lord. You believe in the Lord, sis? Yes, I do. You do. You believe in the Lord. Let's see what the let's let's see what it says. It says, he that believeth in the Lord, what are they supposed to do? Listen up, listen up. He that believeth in the Lord, taketh heed to the commandments. So it says, he that believes in the Lord takes heed to the commandments. You take caution not to break God's commandments. That's right. right. Believe it or not, whether you know it, believe it or not, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, with a woman wearing pants, that's a commandment of the Lord. So if you believe, you're going to take heed to what the commandment says. And let's, let's see what this says about when you do take heed to the commandment. Read. And he that trusteth in him shall... So, so when you trust in the Lord, that means you apply his commandments. You do what he say do. And what it say? Shall fare never the word. It says you shall fare never the worse. Meaning the most high God going to protect you. He going to look out for you. So don't be worried about this. it's a cold world, things are going wrong. No, follow God's commandment. Right. That's right. I know you got dresses in your closet. I do. Put on a dress because that's, com that's God's commandment. That's yeah. right. He said when you obey him, he going to fight for you. That's right. He going to protect you. So don't be worried about what's going on in the streets because if, if, whether you got on pants or a dress, if somebody want to attack you, they're going to attack you. Right. The thing is that when you believe in the Lord, you, you take heed to his commandments and he's going to fight for you. Don't worry about that stuff. Keep his commandments. Take caution. You got to take heed to the commandments. Don't wrestle with it in your mind. Don't keep thinking, oh, well, I, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, no, just apply what's written. Right. And watch the change happen. Don't fight against the change. 
Watch, watch greatness start to happen to you. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Stop fighting against God's laws. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. These laws was written for us. That's why we suffer as a community, because we're not applying God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. right. The prophet Baruch said, God had found out all the ways of knowledge. And we got it right here, and we ain't even applying it. Right. We think we're trying to find, figure it out ourselves. Like we know something. Teach. Psalm chapter 119 and verse 59. Bring it out. show you how our forefather reacted when it came to God's law, statutes, and commandments. I thought on my ways. He thought on his ways. And turn my feet unto thy testimony. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So that's what we got to do. Read it one more time. It's telling us what we have to do. What was written before time was written for our learners. We got to take examples from our forefathers. Read. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. He said he made haste and delayed not. Before it, before it said, before it said I, I thought upon my ways. Just like we all did. We all thought upon our ways. And then we, we, we made haste to keep these law, statutes, and commandments. Because we fear God and we fear his judgment. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.